Hi, everybody. This Hi. is A Wee Bit of Alchemy, and I'm Rick Barrett. Uh, tonight, we're going to continue with our exploration into the Qua and the myth of shifting weight and integrating the Qua with the Yao and the Elbow Jin. So we got a whole bunch of stuff mm -hmm. here to, um, you know, to cover, and uh, uh, we're going to try to make it as smooth a ride as possible. So please uh, feel free to interject questions and stuff like that if you, uh, if you have them. Uh, keep the conversation rolling. I'm very interested in the, uh, whatever feedback you've got and, uh, and particularly any, any areas that I'm maybe rushing through too fast. But uh, so let's start by reviewing the myth of shifting weight. So for uh, basic idea is that if I ask someone to shift their weight from side to side, they go like, they will invariably do this. And that's the, uh, that's something that it's kind of, it's programmed in. We, uh, we do that, we've been doing that for decades. And so that's just the natural thing. And if we're going front to back, we're gonna go, we're gonna rock back and forth like this. And something that I pointed out in Tidy Trend Through the Western Gate was that any horizontal movement of the pelvis will uproot you. It will, it will interrupt your whole body energetic connection and it'll uproot you. And um, it's, so any, anytime I go like this, I am floating. There is no root there. So the solution to this that I came up with was to, to use the qua as the interface to, to an, allow the smooth transfer of substantiality from one leg to the other. So uh, if you want to stand up, we're just going to walk through this. So begin with your weight 50-50. Uh, and so just begin by just shifting your weight back and forth and just get the feeling of that. And just pay attention to your sense of rootedness. You may be balanced, but um, notice that if someone were to come along and push like this, you most likely would go like that. And that's because there is no energetic connection with the earth when we do that. So I'm going to move over here. So there's no energetic connection with the earth. So we, we want to create that energetic connection. So as a practical matter, it's kind of cool to be able to be rooted in all these situations, particularly as a martial artist. But it even more so in doing this, you plug into the big chi. That is, you're plugging into the vast, virtually infinite resources of the universe. And whatever your body mind can handle will be the amount of, of energy that you're, you can tap into. But you need to be able to, to access it. And there's a very specific way of doing that. You feel the ball of your foot. So let's say I'm I'm going from 50-50 and I want to go into my, my left leg, this leg here. I feel the ball of my left foot. So right behind the big toe there, that knobby part right there on the big toe line. I feel that my weight is spread out through the whole foot, but I want to feel that as a, as a thing, right? And I'm using that, that's the bullseye. The, the weight is throughout the foot, but that's the bullseye. That's my center. That's where my attention goes. I center my weight on that. I set my knee. And what that means is I move my knee into position so that it is more or less vertical, almost vertical, just slightly back from vertical on the knee, right? So you can see right about like that. So I can feel the ball of my foot, my knee is there. If I push my knee too far forward, try that and just notice the strain that puts on your knee. If you're too far back, you're in your heel, Notice that you're floating again. But we go back to the ball of the foot. We feel that. 
on the inside of the foot and notice that there's an energetic connection there that we get. So the um, same thing when we're going side to side here. So the, feel the ball of your left foot, set the left knee, okay? So that's, so it's right over the ball of the foot. And then you're going to use the claw right here, the, the hip joint, and you're gonna spiral down. And notice what's happening here. I'm not rocking back, my butt's not going backward, nor is it going out to the side. It's just spiraling down. So there's a, there's a sense of screwing into the ground, but I'm doing it through the ball of the foot. My knee hasn't moved at all. If I, if I screw down and my knee turns with it, that is if my hips are not relaxed, my quad is not released, I'm gonna turn and my knee's gonna go with it. You don't want that. You want to have, notice my hand here on my leg. So my, as my body turns, that leg is not going anywhere. So that's what's, that's what's happening here. We're spiraling down. And as you do that, just feel into that. Notice my body is vertical. Okay, and uh, so the, there is a, a continuum of energy going through my foot, up my leg, up to the top of my head, reaching up through the, through the crown point of my head. And there is a, I'm connected up to the big chi, the earth chi and the sky chi, the heaven chi, and I'm released down into it. I'm sitting down into that, that right leg or left leg. So now I'm going to go, I'm going to go into my right leg. I feel the ball of my right foot. I set my right knee. I spiral down to the left. So I'm going to be turning to the right. So I'm going to spiral down to the left. Notice my butt hasn't gone sideways at all. I'm just screwing down this way. Okay. And then I turn without moving the leg, without, without moving the knee. So I turn, I'm still keeping my vertical posture and I'm still rooted. I haven't lost my energetic connection from, from the first time I established my, my, uh, my root to the ball. So I'm like this, I'm gonna go back to my left foot now. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee. Okay, now I'm starting to make my left leg substantial. So I'm going to release down and spiral down to the right. Because I'm returning left, so I wanna spiral down to the right and then turn to the left to rotate. Okay, and let's go back to the, to the right leg, to the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left and turn to the right. To the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the right, turn to the left. Notice that I'm not bobbing up. I'm not spiraling down and then bobbing up and coming down again and like this. You wanna keep it, spiral down and turn. Spiral down and turn. Spiral down and turn. So this is the qua part of this. So any questions on this? I'd like to uh, clarify that before we go forward. Scott. Um, so you're saying um, your, your weight is, uh, you know, even through the whole foot, but you used to teach us the three nails and I thought we wanted more of the weight. I thought we wanted more on the three nails than the whole foot. Or am I wrong? Uh, that is the way I did teach. Uh, that um, and that's a that's an idea, and that's also uh, the uh, the way I describe it in Taiji Chuan through the Western Gate. I describe it with the with the three nails, and uh, that I've softened over the years to uh, want to include the whole foot. But just have, so now it becomes less of, of a mechanical thing that is mechanically on, on the inside of my foot, which I found was actually giving my knees some trouble doing it that way. So if uh, the idea of three nails is if I, uh, here we go, da, 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 da. Oh. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> three nails, Master uh, Chen had. One here, one here, one here. So I'm saying, forget the three nails, 
just use the middle one there, the second one, and cover, allow the, the weight to spread out through the whole foot. It simplifies things, and I've actually found it uh, much easier on my knees to do that. What I ran into with the three nails was that if my weight is on the inside of my foot like this, I had a tendency to slop my knee over too much. So I want to have my, I want to have the weight spread out through the whole foot, but feel my attention going down through the, through the ball of the foot. So once you do that, and this is where we, we're shifting from mechanics into energetics. So if I do that, I start off by, by really having my weight there so that I can really get the feel of that. But once I, uh, I learn how to do that, then I can put my, I can just feel the, the ball of the foot. And no matter where I put the weight of my foot, I can use that to create root. And it doesn't matter where my weight is at that point. It's the energetic connection. But to learn it, we first want to do it combining the energetics of the mechanics. And so we'll gradually wean ourselves off of the mechanics and, and be more focused on the energetics. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we weren't really shifting our weight, we were shifting our energy. That's right. That's right. So we're, we're but we start off by keeping the, uh, keeping the awareness of that mechanical connection first and then we'll gradually develop an awareness of the energy that, that is associated with that. And okay. then that becomes the, the point of reference. But first you get, the, uh, first you get it so that, that you feel the, you gotta feel the ball of the foot, which most of us don't do as a regular, as a regular thing anyway. So, you know, I've been doing it for, you know, 30 years now. So it's a, uh, for me, it's a, it's a thing. It's, I don't have to, remind myself to feel the ball of my foot it's it's you know yeah where where else am i going to put my attention but uh uh when you're first just getting into it you need to need to have something solid there something substantial to to refer to richard you had a question i do i'll okay. share on first i've got a question it's a mechanical question and okay. in relationship to setting the knee so i've made one leg substantial and on there i am but the insubstantial leg, it's already in, it's in the same position as it was. I've never released it. I never came out of it. Um, do, That's a very good question. Yeah. I, so well, what I, do I do with that insubstantial leg? Pardon? <laughs> the question is, what do I do with that insubstantial leg? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm missing a step as I'm going from substantial to the insubstantial is staying right there. You know, you know, the it, knee it's, position. It's, anyone's asked me that question mm. <laughs> after all these years, yeah. decades, you know, <laughs> that, that, that may be the first time someone actually said that. So what is, what's going on there with the insubstantial leg? So if I feel the ball of my left foot, set my left knee spiral down to the left. Now my left leg is my substantial leg. So what's happening here with this? I'm letting it go. I'm just, this is, <laughs> this is empties out. It's, it's loosey goosey. Crazy legs Hirsch, you know, it's like uh, Elvis Presley. It's uh, mm -hmm. you, the more you can actually empty this out so that there is no tension in your right hip joint when your, when your left leg is, is substantial, mm -hmm. then you are, you totally focus on that, at which point this guy can do all kinds of neat tricks, right? With, uh, with, with, with that. But if there's any tension at all that I go there, and I'm still like, ah, I'm still hanging on. So uh, it's learning to fully commit to the substantial leg. And that's a practice. But it's a really valuable practice for those of us over 50 uh, and, uh, we're interested in, uh, in being able to be ambulant for a few more decades. And uh, the more I can be able to 
able to maintain my root whilst, while sustaining myself on one leg is helpful in that, in that, uh, you know, that purpose. Any other questions? Valerie. Do you have a question? The first part isn't a question. It's, okay. okay, the, talking about the insubstantial leg, okay, or it could be the insubstantial arm. You don't forget about them. I mean, you're supposed to be, okay, should, I'm shooting on me. Um, don't we want to be, we want to be aware of everything simultaneously, although some area may be the substantial area, but that doesn't mean that we forget about that insubstantial leg. I mean, our awareness is there, but not, not to the degree of make it, it becomes insubstantial while this other area is substantial, but we don't forget about the insubstantial portions of us, correct? That I is a that very good point, Valerie. Thank you. Okay. And that's so, so even though we empty out, we are. And this is another little trick that we uh, we have to develop a uh, sensitivity for is that, oh, OK, I'm going into my substantial leg here. I'm emptying this one out. But as Valerie says, we're not forgetting about this. I am becoming aware of insubstantiality as a thing, as not just a thing, but an important thing. So this isn't just waste here. This isn't just something that, that's hanging on. This is actually part of this whole circuit. And the, uh, you know, I'm getting, I'm plugging in with, with my uh, left foot, but my right foot, even though there's very little weight that it is in it, it's it's still grounding that energy so it completes the circuit so then you get uh this and the degree that i can release this allows the energy to flow more freely so i think that's, that's a, a key point so thank you uh valerie and thank you sharon both of those are great great points Does valerie, valerie yes yeah, something more yes yes um okay so I was never very good at the three nails, okay? But I did lock into the ball of the foot. Yay. And saying the same thing that you say, but in a little bit different words, thought directs energy, energy follows your thought. So I feel very invested in the ball of my foot. I mean, in particular. I'm not lifting up off of my heel, but I'm definitely not in my heel. Um, I just feel a great deal of substantiality in the ball of the foot. So are you saying now that I should spread my awareness out more evenly to the rest of the foot rather than, and I don't even know if I can do that, you know, rather than feeling so invested. No, you said it. You <laughs> You said it with regard to the, the legs, and I'm just you're just extrapolating that the substantial part of the foot doesn't mean you forget about the insubstantial part of the foot. Okay. okay. So it's exactly what you were saying about the legs. And it's just yes. So and we can only do this in a super conscious state. It's just too much to think about if you're if you're plodding along and saying, you know, putting it together like IKEA furniture. It's like, you know, you can't, it doesn't work that way. You have to move into a super conscious state so that you can then access so much more of your body mind than you ever dreamed possible. And that's the practice that we're into here. And the, the beautiful thing about the way we're doing it here is that just by doing this, you can easily access the super conscious state, which then allows you to, to add more and more tricks to the uh, to the, the repertoire and then you keep building on that and that's kung fu you know you're you're learning incorporating 
making real all these different abilities and but you need to be able to shift into that superconscious state in order to be able to access them richard um i'd, I'd just like to say a few words about how i'm thinking about this and working with it okay um i sort of started with why do we shift our weight you know, we shift our weight usually to free up movement on the other side. So I've, I, sometimes I will shift my weight back and forth, and then I'll change my substantiality. So what I'm doing is I'm teaching myself the benefit of creating substantiality instead of shifting my weight. And when I do that, I realize that I'm much more stable to move the other side if I create substantiality the way that we're practicing this. So I've been moving substantiality back and forth, back and forth in parallel, and also back and forth, um, you know, like these movements. And I've been trying to learn to do it more quickly. And that's being very successful. So I'm learning how to create substantiality I mean, almost as quickly. I mean, the goal is to be able to create substantiality more quickly even than you can shift your weight. Um, so that's, is that helpful to anyone? Uh, do you think that, that that thought about it is helpful? I, I, I think not. I think that uh, it kind of guarantees you're going to not have a root. You may have to uh, reality, but you're not you're not going to have an energetic connection. I think, uh, I, I, think I, I, I yeah I don't I don't I don't understand that because what I'm doing is creating the connection. Okay. I'm doing just what we're doing. I'm just contrasting it with with doing that instead of shifting the weight. Yeah, okay, because the language you used was shifting the weight, so I'm so maybe I, I'm not I'm maybe I misunderstood you. Yeah, I'm, I think Richard raised, raised the point. I, I think I was getting hung up on the same word of weight. It's kind of like the same light bulb with, for me. It's like weight is, I was trying to think of, you know, releasing the weight, but weight is not the right word. It's, it's, it's a different concept. It's, yeah, it's, it's substantial. It, it's a different, different concept. I was trying to, get the weight off my foot but it's really a whole different concept right i'm trying i'm trying to exchange the concept of weight shift with the concept of change in substantiality exactly and yeah. i'm being and i'm being very successful with that yeah, okay. yeah. Um, but yeah, i think that I, but i think it serves i think it serves a good purpose to contrast the two things more clearly like yes. why do we shift our weight we shift our weight to free our the other side up. Well, instead of doing that, create substantiality as we're learning to do it. And you find that you're much more stable. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I get exactly what you mean. I was, I, it's like, I was chasing something, something wrong. You can demonstrate, Richard? Yes. Move on. Move on. My, my producer says to move on. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. The, I, just, I just wanted to float that out. I guess I didn't explain it quite well enough, but it's working very well for me. Good. So I, I, let me I, just reiterate, reiterate what I'm talking about, and we can discuss that other, later. My idea is that instead of shifting weight, which invariably happens like this, I say, no, I'm going to make the left leg more substantial by feeling the ball, setting the knee, and spiraling down. So now my one could say that I have more weight in my left leg now and that it would be true, but I don't want to put any attention on that. Just like Dennis was saying, I want to put the attention on the fact that this leg is substantial and it's also rooted because I have made the energetic connection to the ball of my foot through my knee and through my quad so that, that I have that firmly established at that point And that enables me to continue that process. And so, Having that as a our uh, the language that we're using, you know, allows for 
that smooth transfer of energy back and forth, the smooth transfer of substantiality. Okay, so let's uh, let's go on from there and uh, the. Um, we we're going to add Yao and oh, you were going to. Yeah. So I want to add Yao and, uh, and, and uh, the um, elbow gin to this. So let's start with the Yao. So the Yao is this, the lower, lower back here, the uh, lower lumbar sacral area. And it is opposite the, you know, the, the Dantian. So this gets into Valerie's question for, for about Don Tian. So Don Tian is this, this whole lower abdomen area and the Yao is opposite that, it's, it's the lower back area. And so the, what we get with the Yao is the yang or positive impulse to move and to uh, direct energy. So what I'm doing by spiraling down is into the qua is to release the qua and establish the uh, my foundation. I disengage both of my hips by doing that. I'm, I've released the uh, the, uh, the any tension is there and be able to just to, to uh, establish this energetic connection here through between my legs and my torso. So to turn, if I want to then use that to, to be able to uh, generate power, put your hand on your lower back, put it on your sacrum. And um, so what you're going to do is turn the body like that. In fact, forget the, uh, forget the qua part right now and just Turn the body. So using, using, focusing on your lower back, use that as your impetus to turn your body. So turn it to the right, turn it to the left, turn it to the right, turn it to the left, using that. So what you're doing is your, that becomes the pivot point of your turn. You're using your Yao to direct the energy as you go. Okay, now if we add that to the qua, we feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the left. Good. Now feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left. And now I'm going to turn my body to the right, but I'm going to use my yao to do that. So use the yao to make the turn. Now feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the right. So I've made my left leg substantial now, and I'm gonna use my yao to make the turn. Now the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left. So this establishes my right leg is substantial, and then I turn using my yao. How's that going? Questions on that, thoughts about that? Does it feel, uh, you feel it? Valerie, you have something? No. Everybody good? Everybody good? Okay, good. So there, you can feel that there, there's something there to that. Okay, that we're actually, so what we've gone here is we've gone from the yin part, which is to load up, and to the yang part, which is to turn. Okay, and this is happening throughout a, any Tai Chi form, most Qigong, things like that. There's a, there's some turning involved, right? And so the getting it, so getting those two together requires a certain amount of practice in directing your awareness to both these places. So now we're starting to have, we're expanding our, uh, the amount of information we're, we're, we're dealing with. So we need to be in that, that super conscious state, which luckily we are able to get to if we, Feel the ball of the foot, set the knee, release the qua. Ah, so just by doing that, just by feeling into that, we then start to open up into this whole brain coherence, creates a superconscious state. And we feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, 
spiral down to the left. Feel the feel your yao there and turn. And feel how easy that is to do. So doing it in an empty, uh, you know, in an empty hand form of any sort will help you to to inculcate that. So that it says becomes something when you do your form or do any kind of practice, you just practice and you have some awareness of both the qua and the yao. And you gradually develop a sensitivity, a, an awareness, a familiarity with that practice and, and it becomes part of who you are. It, every time you do something like that, you add to your whole body coherence and you create a more harmonious organism. Your body becomes more and more fun to be in, which is fun to be in. So I'm going to add uh, one more piece to this now. And feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the left. Now feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee. We're going to do something now, and we're going to use the uh, part of the cloud hands idea. So reach out with your with your arm, set your elbow, okay? And so now you're going to turn and you're going to reach with your elbow. You want to feel your elbow as you turn. You're also, put your other hand there, feel your, feel your yao as you do that, okay? And open, All right? So that's the, that's the, the, uh, what we've done now is we have, a link between the yin of releasing the qua to the yang of the yao turning to the elbow jin, which integrates the whole system, which allows us to express the energy in a way that is uh, uh, quite spectacular. So, uh, Marie, you want to give me a hand with this? Okay, so Marie's gonna help me out. And uh, the idea is just first you're gonna turn, right? Just just uh, do that and just do it like a cloud hand, right? And I provide a little bit of resistance here and go ahead and she she turns and there's no power there because there's the energetic connection is not there. She's trying to do it with muscle and it's not it's not working. But if we she feels the ball of her right foot, sets her knee. And to put your put your hand there on your yao, right? And you're going to use the yao to turn, and you're going to reach, feel my my hand with your elbow, and then she, and then as she turns now, it's uh, the uh, the energy becomes complete throughout the whole system. She reaches, and she uses the power of her yao, and and to be able to. <laughs> <laughs> So it, uh, uh, the, uh, this is how we get any kind of, of turning power in a Tai Chi form. Thank you, Maria. So this is how we get the, any kind of power there. If you've got a buddy, then you can, you can try it out and just you see. The, the, you get those three things together. You feel the ball, set the knee, you spiral down, feel the yao, you, you turn with the yao, you reach with the elbow, and boom, you've got You've got this whole connection there. And the it, trick is to set the elbow so that you're not pushing with the arm. You're just turning from the yao. Did everybody hear that? She said to make sure that you, when you turn, you're reaching with the elbow, but you're, you're not pushing with the elbow. The elbow is an expression of the energy that's coming through the whole body. Okay. Any questions on that? We're, we're gonna we're gonna work on that a little bit. Just uh, just want to make sure that the description is is uh, reasonable. Everybody good? Okay, let's do it. All right. So we're gonna do a cloud hands type exercise. So here we go. So feel the ball of your left foot. Set your left knee. Spiral down to the left. Reach out. Point with your index finger. Reach out there with that. You're reaching out to the side here, your whole body is turned. So take your other hand, put it on your yao. Now feel the ball of your right foot, set your right knee, spiral down to the left. So you're loading up your right leg. Your right leg has become substantial. 
you reach with your right elbow is and you feel that elbow okay and then you also feel your yao and now use your yao to turn your body and just reach with the elbow as you do that and continue and boom okay and bring your left hand up feel the ball of the left foot set the left knee spiral down to the right feel your yao set your elbow and turn use the yao to power that boom and reach now put your right hand up feel the ball of the right foot set the right knee spiral to the left feel the yao reach with the elbow and turn left hand and right hand on the yao left ball set the left knee spiral right reach with the elbow turn power with the with the yao So notice we're not shifting weight. We are shifting our substantiality from the right leg to the left and back again. We are connecting up to with the elbow chin. We're reaching with the elbows. We're using the yao to make that possible. And when you do that, then it becomes quite a graceful activity. Whenever you're ah, oh, you're you're able to make that connection because you're not just using mechanics, you're not just using muscles, you are focusing on the energetic connection. The body then becomes an expression of your energy. Okay. The arm right. that you're reaching with is your 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 leg and your arm is on the, your 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 substantial leg. Is on the same side as the arm that you're reaching with? Yes. Yeah. So okay. it makes this one a real simple, a simple exercise in that right ball, right knee, right claw, right arm, right elbow, <laughs> turn to okay. the right. Okay. <laughs> Every, it's it's a real real simple thing. There's no there's no uh, cross talk on yeah. this one. Okay. And, you know, going to the left, it's everybody's on the left. It's you're the you know, only thing you do when you're going to the left is you first spiral to the right, which we're going to do every time we do that anyway. We're going to we're going to turn. So that getting that connection there is uh, is is crucial to being able to express energy in these situations. Be able to you know, to use your Taiji Tran to to make cool stuff happen. And uh, the cool stuff is just an indicator that you got something going. You know, it's not, you know, it's not really the, the ideal. The ideal is how does it feel inside? How does it, how is it transforming my body mind to create this body mind spirit integration? That's what we're looking for. But along the way, it's really nice to be able to make the stuff work. And the making the stuff work is an indication that you got you got it on the right track. Okay. Any questions? Sharon. It's just an observation, but I I find that by bringing my attention to the yao, I can at last get my qua relaxed. Oh, good. I. I've always been, I always have a little bit of tension there and that it shifted when I changed where my mind was. Hmm. Excellent. I think that, uh, you know, you, if you're not used to doing that, your, your body says, how are we going to make this body turn? So the place it goes to is the quad to make it turn. And so then it tightens up to make the turn. Whereas if you're moving from the yao, then you, it, that, that's eliminated from the process. That'd be my guess on what, what's happening there.
but it's something that, you know, again, you've, you've come up with an observation that I've not encountered before. And uh, I really appreciate that because it's something that is, you're right on the money. Cool. Anybody else? Questions, thoughts? Valerie. Okay. So how does the Duncan slash pelvis, which I agree it's that whole area, how does that play into it? Or is it, as I've suspected, it doesn't play as much of a big deal role as has been purported, <clears throat> purported over the years? Great question. And that's something that, uh, in my experience, I'm uh, totally with you on that. That's, that's my observation as well. So the, it doesn't mean that it's not doing something because it's part of your body and it's, you know, it's an energy center. It's, it's where uh, uh, there's energy circulating there, of course, and, and it is, um, allows you to center your body too. You know, if I bring my, a lot of people will turn, you know, you tell them to turn and they'll, they'll go like this, right? They'll move from the shoulders. And people who've been, even people who've been doing Tai Chi for, for decades will, well, they'll, they'll turn, they'll start, they'll initiate the process with their shoulders. So having this as a, as a, a focal point allows you to say, no, no, you move the Dantian as you do that. And so then you're, oh, it's hard to move the whole body without moving this part. So if you focus on that, so it's uh, as we cultivate these, these abilities, you can say, oh, okay, I'm moving from the Yao, but the negative part of that, the, uh, the insubstantial part of that is the, is the Dantian. And feeling into that, feeling into that insubstantiality also powers the substantiality of my Yao. Um, so it's definitely something you want to cultivate at some point, but I think uh, in trying to keep it simple, don't think about it right now. Because you know, thinking about it right now will uh, just get in the way. That'd be my, that'd be my assessment of, of that, uh, of that situation. Okay. Anybody else? Thoughts, questions, problems? Sandy. Yeah. So the, like Tai Chi classics, they always say, you know, that the waist directs the energy. Is that what we're talking about with the Yao? Yeah. Waste is oftentimes, um, it's a mistranslation of Yao. Okay. It, uh, you know, that's, um, what I've gotten from my teachers is that, uh, yeah, it's you know that's it's kind of a, a botched job on the uh, on the on the translation, you know that, and you could think about it as both the the Dantian and the and the uh, the Yao together. You could call that the waste, I guess, you know. But uh, ordinarily, we we think of the waist as being up a little bit higher than that, right? So, and we want to actually be moving down, down here more rather than up here. So, uh, I know my, my understanding of it, whatever, no, it turned from the waist, so it was more like, like that, right? And which is not quite, not quite getting there, but think of it as Yao, and I think the, uh, I think you're going to be uh, uh, better suited. Anybody else? Any other questions? Good. Do we need to drill this some more? Do you want to uh, move on to other things? Do you want to talk on Guillermo's question about push? Um, do you want to read that? And Stan's uh, other one. Uh, do, we, do we want to drill? First of all, do we, do we want to work on this some more to get uh, get more of a handle on it or move on? Speak to me. I got that one. Move on. move on, move on. Okay, good. All right, so we got, so we got the, we got that. The, um, uh, we've got ten minutes. Good. So, uh, Guillermo had a question about push. So I'm going to. Uh, this may may slop over into another discussion, but let me get. We'll at least get it started. 
So first of all, it's a dreadfully misnamed uh, uh, translation for uh, for on a n uh, because the uh, when we think push, there is an effort involved. The arms are going out and and something I've seen for you, particularly if you have, you're pushing, say, and push hands, there's, anytime you tell someone to push, there is, the triceps are going out and the biceps are pulling back. It's, it, it seems to happen all the time with the, just by using that, that term. It's something that kicks in, just like when you talk about punching. If you, if you think about punching, you know, you, you reach out with your hand like that and there is a drag on the system. So Master Chen would, would always say, oh, here is your coffee, here is your tea. That's how you punch. There's no, there's no pullback on that. The same thing with push. He called it the push of no push. So it's like, oh, so you're, you're reaching out, but you're not, but there's no muscular contraction going on there. Is all happening through the connective tissue system. But uh, Guillermo's question was specifically related to what you do with the qua on the push. Is that right, Guillermo? Um, wait. Oh, uh, yeah, yes, shifting. bringing this bringing this thing about shifting the weight when you push. Shifting the push. Okay, good. Exactly. The idea here is is that if I uh, the way I learned to push was you rock back and then you and then you you push right you and then some people do it by you're you're pushing off the back leg like that and neither of those are particularly elegant or energetic or anything they may actually get the job done if you're just trying to push someone away but they uh, they are not what we're talking about. On energy in, in, the, in the Taiji moves is, is there's a sense of pressing down and then reaching out. So there's a down and out. So there's, and there's a compression that occurs and then, and then that's, that's where the uh, the, the energy of, of, the, of the push is. So that's why I say it's not really a, a, a really a great translation for on, but we have uh, the way, I will show you the way that I like to do a, a push move. So if, uh, let's say I'm starting from a, uh, I'll use Master Chen's form for this one. And I'm starting from press and I feel the ball of my left foot. I set my left knee and then I release my left claw and separate my hands. And I'm feeling pressing down, feeling the, the weight, the substantiality coming down as my hands come down. And notice how far back I've gone. Notice that my butt has not gone back past my heel. It's, I'm still, I feel the ball of my left foot, set my left knee and I'm releasing. I'm basically sitting down into my quad. And as I do that, the, uh, my body doesn't, my body remains vertical and I don't, notice if I go back even just a little bit, I've lost it. Right here, I'm, I'm rooted, I'm connected so that then I feel the ball of my right foot, I set my right knee, and I release my right claw. Basically sitting down into that, and then I just reach out with my hands. So again, it looks like left ball, set the left knee, and there's no spiraling in this one. This one's a little more sophisticated in that I'm just releasing into the qua, so you require some familiarity with, with that feeling of the qua. And I, my hands press down, it's almost like I'm coming around a ball here, like a big beach ball or something. My hands come down 
to chest height. I feel the ball of my right foot, set my right knee, so my right knee goes forward a little bit. So I've begun the process of making my right leg substantial. I release my right quad, which allows it to be even more substantial. And then I just reach out. Okay, so again, so it's left ball, knee, release the quad, press, elbows, come down, right ball, set the right knee, release the right quad, and reach out. So notice how compact this is. It, uh, it's all, it all happens like this, boom. I can, I can do it in a telephone booth. It's a, a very, if I could find a telephone booth, I would do it there. But the, uh, you know, it's very little is happening there. If I do a, a bigger form, a large frame form, like a Yang Cheng Fu form, if I'm, if I'm going from press here, right, and I'm going, same idea, it's, it's a longer, deeper stance, right? I'm here like this, but then I go, same idea. I'm coming down like this, right, and boom, out like that. Same idea that there's a, a, uh, a release down and then out. So there's a whoosh, kind of a, a circular energy that gets generated by that. So we're not going to get a chance to drill that today, but I just wanted to introduce that to you and kind of answer Guillermo's question about that. Is that, uh, is that your elbows? What's that? Look like a lot of it was in your elbows. Lots in the elbow. So without the elbow gin, nothing's happening. And without the quad, nothing's happening. And I didn't even mention the yao, but that was there too. And uh, uh, you know, so there's, it's it's a lot of moving parts in a very compact uh, move, but it's really cool when you get it. I have to say, I had to work on that for you know a good 25 years before I before I figured that one out. So it's it's a lot of time and energy went into invest breaking that one down to actually make a a a, a push that actually could push that could push energetically. Valerie. Mm -hmm. So on the the last part where you're actually you know the elbows moving forward, is there a more opening in that same quad the, as the foot fits forward? I mean, it's relaxed, but does it open more? Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. So, uh, want to give me a hand with this, Maria? So just so you can feel the, feel what this is, uh, see what it looks like. Put it, put it, on, put it on the full, full, full screen. There we go, good. So just to get the get the idea of this, so Marie gives me some resistance there, just you know, your boom. And I just sorry, you're like this. And if I if I just come down here, boom, like this, and release down into this, and then ah, oh, the it requires very little actual effort whenever you whenever you get it, boom, you you take it down in, ah, oh, you feel this, the, the energy is coming down. So that there's a compression there, and then it becomes a very light touch that enables you to create a. Uh, you want to do it to me? Sure. Okay, here we go. Well, I don't know if I could, but. But okay, so Maria's going to do it to me. So you're going, and you're going from a from a from a press, right? And then good, you feel the ball, set the knee, good. That's it. That's it. Good. Now you're coming down. Good. Set the knee. Good. And then just reach with. Ah, there, there you. There you are. Okay. So yes, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, love when these demos work. The uh, so that's the energy of it. It's 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 an uncanny thing. It's it's a, a water energy, and it comes like this whoosh, this big wave crashing on the on the shore, and you say, "Oh, that wave's not nothing," you know, and you stand there like, "Whoa!" It just comes and it just knocks you over. And uh, that's the feeling of it whenever you get it correctly, because it's not just a, you know, bracing against the floor and, and jamming it like a piston. It's more like a whoosh, this big wave coming through. The secret no. is to try to push. 
Right. So that's why Master Chen called it the push of no push. So you don't put, you're not thinking push when you push. So, <laughs> Rick. So when I, when I did it, as soon as the hands came out, the energy just started pouring into the fingers again. <laughs> I started laughing. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, Happy that's hands. I can always tell it works. You know, the energy just starts pounding in. Oh, right. man. Yep. Love it. Valerie. Um, I love that you had Maria do it. Um, yes. Because I could see the qua open similarly to what I do, whereas, and Scott had mentioned this while we were watching you, you're doing it purely energetically. So she had a little bit more of the gross level and you have that higher level. But it was nice to see. <laughs> <laughs> So it's, it was really nice to see that, though, because I keep, uh, you know, so I'm watching you and it's like, ah, ah, but I don't see What's that. What's he doing there? What's yeah, that? yeah. So it's good to see somebody who is doing it correctly, but, and I don't mean to, I'm not dissing Maria by saying that she's not as high level. She just hasn't perfected it quite that same way that you she's have. She's not as sneaky as I am. At that. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Okay. Thank you. I was just kidding, Valerie. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I <laughs> know. Uh, cool. Anybody else? Any other questions? Any thoughts? Uh, great. Okay. I think it's it's quitting time. Uh, Nora, do you have something? No, you're just waving goodbye. Great. Okay. Thank you all. Love you thank all. Thank you, Rick. You bet. Thanks, Rick. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye bye, everybody.